It's Linda McPhee's workshop. Here's Linda. You heard that bouncing music. You know it's us bouncing or playing the piano or dancing or doing crazy things. And I do have one of my favorite guests on. She is the non-sewer. And I'm always trying to convince her to sew. And I think she's looking around to get the sewing machine someplace and maybe get it dusted off. We're not sure we're quite there yet, but this will do it, the project. So, Kat, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Linda. It's a pleasure. Oh, good. And your little outfit is looking very good. Thank you. You know, you made this at this workshop. I was going to say I made this, but there's no hope in heck. <laughs> Nobody see. would believe that if I, I see, said I created I this ensemble. Well, you were the model and you were the inspiration. And we said, you know, you said, well, could I have something? And that's why it's so exciting to sew because then people say, you mean you could do blah, blah, blah? Yeah. Could you do Blah, 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 yeah. And for instance, your gorgeous jacket, Linda, let me see the back of it. Well, there is that. Look is. at that. <laughs> that is It's stunning. just a little subtle advertising for watching the show. You know, people have to, I have to do it every time. But let me show you what we're going to have for you to make today. Because yes. if you get your sewing machine, this is something you could do. So let's show you. It's something called a throw. And it is one piece of fabric that actually just is slit up the middle and hemmed around the edge or not hemmed, it could just be a piece of fabric. I see. And it one size fits all. It's just very elegant, very simple. You could handle something like that, could Of course. I mean, you could wear it, and, and then we'll show you how to do it. Yes, because a throw usually, typically for me, it's something you would put on a couch. Yes. A throw. Well, you could throw it on a couch, too. Speaking of couch, I shouldn't say. Yeah, no, 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 no. This is one from a couch. This is, this is the, the throw that was on the couch. No. Yes. Serious? Yes. I mean, this is why people buy these, because they go on the couches. And then you can wear them out yes, to the grocery yes, store. Yes. So all you have to do is slash it in the middle and... Wear it. It and is that's comfy, it. cozy. So we put a little triangle there to finish off so it doesn't ravel there. But it's already fringed. It's already done. So this could go back on the couch, and you could then enjoy it on the couch. I cannot believe, Linda, the ideas that you come up with <laughs> for these items. It's it is, amazing. It is good. It is. And so here is then one that we got a little fancier, and we bound this one. So ah, here is the binding. See. So this is ultra suede around the outside edge. So it just makes it a little classier. So each time you just do a little bit more and there's no end. You can have a whole wardrobe of these because they're just so easy to wear and easy to wear over everything. Absolutely. And, and in this winter that we have, I mean, we have to have something warm, Linda. Yes. Or you have something that's not so warm. You could wear this over a coat as well. Oh, yes. So really what you do on this is that you start out. This is your piece of fabric. It's probably 60 inches across. You start out and you're going to slash it down the middle. And now you're going to wear this. You put your body in here. This is your body. You put the body in here and you put it around your shoulders and that's it. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. Well, let me see if that's as easy <laughs> as it sounds, Linda. So that's really what this was, was a piece of fabric. We slashed it down the middle, but then we decided to bind it. So to bind it, ultra suede is a lovely binding because ultra suede comes by the yard as opposed to leather. Leather comes in the skins and you've got to kind of piece it, and, but ultra suede comes in nice long chunks and you can just put it on. So you would put the right side of the ultra suede to the wrong side of the fabric, although this could be reversible. So yes. you'll put this on first, you'll flip it over, flip it back like this and top stitch it. So there is your binding and you'll go right off the end. Relatively That'd be just fine, yeah. Thus far. So okay, then you're going to put the other side on and you're going to go right off the end. So I mean, we put one piece on, it stops there, we put the other one, go right across. So how are we going to make that neat? Well, yes. you could actually just cut it and square it off like that. But we thought it would be kind of nice if you just sew right in the middle and trim. Well, come up to here. So into the middle. Go back there. Go down there. Then cut it off. Oh. And then it makes its nice little... Look this is called that. a mitre corner, and people really think you're clever. A mitre corner? A mitred corner, yes, oh, yes. My, a mitred corner. Yes, yes. So now you can throw that around when you hear that word, when I you see it. I think so. This must be a mitred corner <laughs> yes, exactly. that I'm, I'm witnessing here. Exactly. That yes. is good. So the only other thing that you need to do with this is in this, it's kind of a mess right there at the neck. So we'll actually kind of put this together. You would then take one of these triangles and kind of just cover up the mess. I mean, that's really all it is. So if you look at this, you'll pin this on, sort of keep those together, and pin that on and stitch around there. That covers up that kind of mess. And once you've got that one on, you put one on the other side, and then you can wear it reversibly. So this whole thing is reversible, and you can flip it over and flop it over whichever way you want. Now, how long would this take me to make? 
This well, the finding a... is the is the biggest part of this. So I would yes. say for you, the first time you're going to do this, don't worry about the binding. Just turn this over and top stitch it. Yes, yeah, so essentially this just is a piece of fabric. It is a piece of fabric with a slit in it. And you could just wear it like that. In fact, if you didn't even hem that... I wouldn't tell anybody. You could wear it. Some fabrics don't fray all that much. You could just slash it and wear it. But if I did do the binding, how long do you think? Oh, the binding will probably take you a couple of hours. But I would say if you did nothing, half an hour at the tops. You could do it. There you are. Because these are very popular. Yes, yes. And they look good. You make them shorter, longer, blah, blah, blah. You got it. Thank you. Okay, well, thanks for helping me. Wonderful. Okay, and don't you go away because we've got more good stuff coming. I do get to meet the most interesting people on this job, and again, it's not a job, it's just fun, and it's contagious, and Kathy Monaghan is very contagious because I've got one on, so welcome to the show, Kathy. It's nice to be back. Great, great. So, you can tell me where, what you do and where you're from, because I can tell, and mm -hmm. I, you can see that I love it. Mm -hmm. Well, what we're both wearing is from Pendleton Woolen Mills, mm -hmm. and these are our signature jacquard fabrics. Okay, and you do blankets, and you do lots of different things. Here's your blanket, which is just a classic. Uh, you have this different is, finishes, you said, on these mm -hmm. two? This is an unnapped finish, so it's smooth, and the, mm -hmm. the design's very crisp. And this is woven on a jacquard loom, which allows lots and lots of patterning um, across the surface of the, of the fabric, and the same as with your coat here. Okay. Um, another unique feature, if you flip up the corner, you'll see that it's, it's different colors on the, well, the same colors, but the Different opposite pattern. The pattern. opposite result, right. yeah. And so for yours, you get um, uh, the opposite pattern on the inside. So you kind of get two for one here with this incredible blanket fabric. Exactly. Actually, let's bring in our model because here we are over here and <laughs> just lovely, That's your coat you lovely, want. That's lovely. The one. Well, I don't know which one. I I, they're they're, they're both stunning. so good. So here it is, and I like the way you've made them reversible. The shawl flips back, and so the colors are the same. And you've got the pocket on here with the slash, which is good. And buttons, double buttons. So buttonholes on one side only, and flip up cuff. So shall we take this Absolutely. off and flip it around? Yeah, and this is sort of the bonus with using uh, these jacquard fabrics is that you really do have two different looks. That uh, if you sew it to be a reversible garment, you really get two fabric or two garments. Um, this one you have a much darker um, overall coloring with the bright patterns. The other side was a lot lighter. Yes. So I have to see what you've done for your pocket on this side. That's so the clever part of this coat that I just yes, love. You've so got it's a patch pocket on one side and a slash pocket on the other. And the patch just covers yes. that sort of, mm -hmm. I shouldn't say mess, but the under part mm -hmm. of the slash. So, so on one side it's the lining. Yes. And on the other side it's the patch. Yes. So, oh dear, which side is better? Oh dear, what a dilemma. Isn't it wonderful? It is, it is. So whatever color you decide. And this, as you mm -hmm. said, not the blankets. You don't actually have to cut up the blankets. You don't. We yardage do, we like do have yardage that we sell of Thank the blanket so weight much. fabric. She's just walking right out the door. You she know is, that. yeah. yeah. So we should actually just start at the beginning. How do you right. get this? Well, you know, Pendleton's been weaving wool for almost a hundred, well, over 140 years, and blankets have been around for going on 100 years. We're, wow. we're coming up on yeah. our, our yeah. anniversary year. And we start with wool. We start with the sheep. And we and um, buy lots and lots of wool from many wool growers. Mm -hmm. And the, the sheep um, this are sheared once a year. This is what it looks like when we're looking at right, right. now. It's what it looks like when it comes straight off the sheep. It's uh, a yeah. funky little pile of fuzz yeah. there. Kind of dirty, kind of not, not so perfect. Yeah, they're, they're not shampooed very often. <laughs> and so we have a raw wool there. And after that, um, the raw wool is cleaned and it's scoured. And one of the things that comes off of the wool is lanolin and the lanolin that when you comes, wash it. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that comes from the wool is the lanolin that you use in hand cream and perfumes sure, and cosmetics. Sure. It's a really great resource as well that we're able to, to get from the raw wool. Um, from there we dye our own wool ourselves and sometimes we spin the yarn first and dye it but often we'll dye the wool just as the raw, loose, wool. The, raw yeah. the, the loose wool sure. so that then we can blend it into other colors. Yes. So some of our yarns have lots and lots of colors blended together before it's spun. So after it's dyed, then it goes to carding machines that draw the, 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 the individual 
individual fibers out, and then those fibers are twisted together, and that's to called spinning. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we have yarn. Mm -hmm. And then we go and we take it to our looms and weave it. And yarn can be all different thicknesses. Absolutely. So that's what and we can ply that up, um, that thin yarn into to a multiplied yarn yes. to get thicker yarns. Yes. And actually, these heavy coats are actually made from very thin yarn. Thin yarn so you can but get there's the many, detail. many of them yes. that gives us our details. Exactly. Sure. Um, so after it's woven, the last step is, is finishing it. It's called fulling. And it's washed aggressively. If you've ever thrown a, a wool sweater in mm -hmm. the wash by mistake <laughs> and gotten a tiny, tiny sweater it back. It felt nicely, doesn't it? Does. It does. It felt very nicely. And especially if you're doing it on purpose, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So um, after that process, though, then it goes into to more sophisticated um, finishing. Sometimes it's brushed. So the blanket in the front, are, um, that yes. lovely pattern blanket up, up front, has um, a napped finish. It's real fuzzy. Yes. And yes. that's a, another traditional finish um, that gives you a real soft hand. Mm -hmm. um, you might also have an unnapped finish. So the coat you're wearing is unnapped. And um, many of our blankets are napped because many of our customers like it to be softer and fuzzier. Right. So what a process. And you yeah. also then make lighter yes, and heavier. Yes. I think of Pendleton blankets all the time. Right. But but there's also the wonderful Pendleton pleated skirts yes, and the yes. lovely men's shirts. We're really, really known for wonderful, this high quality make apparel. This men's shirts. Woolen, mm. I mean, I am a bit of a snob, I guess. There's nothing like wool. There's it's nothing just, like wool. And, you know, wool has some attributes that are just, you know, unbeatable. It really takes yeah. dye beautifully. It, it doesn't wrinkle all that easily. No, no. It's not like some yeah, other yeah, other yeah, fibers. Yeah, yeah. So you're... It, it, Travels well, and especially if it's a fine worsted wool, it's it's very comfortable to wear. Yes, it is. Um, it, breathes, it breathes, and yet it can be very warm if you want mm -hmm. it to be warm. Mm -hmm. It resists burning, of course. It does. Yes, it, it does, and it's um, great for um, upholstery because of that. Yes, in terms of safety. Just naturally, it does. Absolutely. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a great fiber. So. It's a wonderful and fiber. And you dye them so you could dye this to match this, uh -huh. and blah blah blah. It mm -hmm. goes on. Yeah, it never ends. It, it doesn't. Okay, so how are we going to sew it? If you're going to, what would you suggest? Well, actually, you know, we have a couple of things that um, that home sewers do. Is one is to take the lightweight wools and make wonderful suits and yes, skirts certainly. and, yep. and, and yep. men's clothing. Traditional kind traditional, of traditional, yep. good, um, high quality wool. Classics, yeah. classics, yeah. exactly. And you know, I I see so often um, when we hear so many stories of customers who their grandparents bought a shirt or bought a skirt, and now it's two generations later, and it's still wearing like <laughs> iron, and it's, it's just as crisp and as beautiful as ever. I meet people all the time who have wonderful clothes that have come down through the generations. Sure, sure. And that's what you wind up doing. If you're sure. sewing with high quality woolens like this, you're creating heirloom fabric. Sure, sure. And, and I was going to say, if and when the style ever goes out, you cut that up and you make it into a, right. I mean, it does never never And, end. you know, also people buy the, our yardage, um, our mill ends, and um, do braided rugs. Sure, so sure. this is a wonderful wool sure, braided rug. Sure. It's very classic, very traditional. Yes, for sure. Um, our jacquard looms, so those looms are, um, our lightweight woolens are, are woven um, in, in our Washougal mill. Okay. And in Pendleton, we have our jacquard looms that weave the pictures. Okay. But do before you go any farther, mm -hmm. you can say we can be invited to come and view Absolutely. these. Absolutely. I mean, what would be more fascinating than seeing this emerge on the loom? It's just it's, magic. It's exciting. And you know, the, the mills are just a wonderful, they have a heartbeat to them. They're, yes. they're really productive places. And Maybe we can get the camera in there one time. That I would be really I think that really would be delightful. Yeah, We'd totally love to have you. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and what I do love is, though, the pictures that we're able to produce. And so we have um, lightweight oh, jacquard woolens yes. that are woven um, for our home bedding line, for, so for bedspreads and the like, um, for um, window coverings. Sure. And this is that sort of two-for-one thing yeah, where you the see reverse, that, you get that the we've got a, 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 a light color. bear on the side and a dark bear on the other side. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's um, one of the, the unique features of the jacquard loom. Okay. And so we can weave different pictures and the reverse is, sure. is opposite. Let's get shown sewing this because yes. this this just fascinates me so what you've you've actually produced your own well binding. actually this is this is our, our felt wool felt binding that yes. we sell and we use that on on our blankets that's the traditional finish for our and of blankets. course it just happens to match because you dyed it, it that just way. happens to match <laughs> yeah. doesn't it okay. also it's um it's a wonderful finish because it um we don't we don't have to have a seam allowance mm -hmm. and we can have a nice flat seam and so our our vests that we have in our line are done this way and so i kind of want to share that with you too that 
you know, you can, as long as you don't have um, a seam that's yes. open, yep. you can um, wear it either side cover like that. It, sure, sure. And you might cover it with felt. You might, you could cover it with well, um, a bias tape. Let's even just look at this. Uh, that's just, you're going to sew this together. And this could be zigzag like this. Mm -hmm. It could be flat locked. It you could, could be. flat lock yep. and flatten yep. it. And then, yes. And I'm also the kind of person that just hand sews it. Yes. I, I like to hand sew a lot so of things. So you would bring this on this side and bring this on this side. Mm -hmm. And you can sew them both at the same time if you're careful. If you're careful. Or you can sew one on or the Mm -hmm. And that's basically really what you're going to do is sew that down there, put the binding all the way around. Where would you stop the binding? Somewhere the top of the sleeve, maybe? Well, or, or, or underneath where it's a little less sure, apparent. Sure, sure. The other, the other thing is, is that um, you, you want to notice this is half the width. So for sewing on top of the seams, yeah, you yeah. cut the, the cut it belt in half. In half. Yeah, yeah. And this is one of our, our vests in our line that has um, an ultra suede. Ultra suede would be finish. fine. And actually, I was just using earlier, it was pleather, so uh -huh. pleather would work fine. Absolutely. You know, this has been great. Thank you so much, Kathy. It's you delightful know. to be here. Okay, see you, you, see you again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you so much. We'll see you soon. I'm back with Kathy from Pendleton Blankets, and you were saying that these blankets really could be used um, traditionally. Absolutely. Our first customers really were the tribes around in the Pendleton area, and we designed with their color tastes and their patterns in mind. And they're still, actually, we still call these robes, because just like the segment earlier with, where you had the couch throws, yes, these yes. Are, are, are just worn as robes still, just as a blanket. And so they have a traditional use presently. Yes, so they, they would slash up the middle and just... No, no, no they just, 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 just wear, wear it wrapped around. around. Oh, really? Yeah. How simple. That's simple. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, our cat would like that. Yes, that's even would. quicker. Yeah, that's good. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to have one of my friends, Margaret Cardinal, come on the show, and we did a tape with her, and she is into moose hair tufting, and of course is using these blankets. Right. So we're going to have a look at that right now. Great. Okay. I'm here with my friend Margaret Cardinal. Thank you for coming on the show because you are the expert in, in all this stuff. So welcome. Or Tansy, I should say again. <laughs> yeah, I don't know my Cree very well, but that's that's good. Um, you teach. What tell me tell me about the program you teach. The program I teach is um, Aboriginal Arts and Design. And part of the program we actually do teach anything from clothing, decorative arts, uh, clothing design, fiber arts. Okay. So I know that you have you Blankets are traditional in your culture, aren't they? That's, that's right, uh, especially the Hudson Bay blanket. Yes, to uh, as a trading that's what thing. Right. Yeah. So these blankets, you've, you, these are not the Bay blankets, these are Pendleton ones. These and, are the uh, Pendleton blankets, yeah. and basically we used uh, the whole blanket. Mm -hmm. And we've designed it so that uh, we fashioned it after the Hudson Bay, Bay capotes, okay. the Métis mm -hmm. coats, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's all one piece all the way around, mm -hmm. and we incorporated the cash lining in it. Yeah. With this one here, if you can turn around, Pauline, we, with the Hudson Bay, we, uh, there, this is always there, the tassel. Yeah. It's, it's when you put the hood up, does it hang down too, or you don't put the hood up? Uh, you can put the hood up when you need to. Okay, what, yeah. what we've done is we've incorporated leather into there and the tin cones and the beadwork yeah. into there yeah. because we just want to make it unique. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, that and is then it's very... a full length. Yeah. Now the next one, if you can turn. Okay, and your mother. You brought your mother. Thank I brought my thank mother again. And it's, yes. Uh, again, she incorporated her famous roses on there. She yeah. did, She actually did the, the elk hide. And, like uh, tanned it, you mean? Yeah. yeah, tanned it and then added to the Pendleton coat. Is there something uh, on the back? Back too. Should we see the oh back yeah, of that? It's fully beaded at the back. All right, and with the fringe and the whole business. So yes, it does make a wonderful. And this one she's made uh, oh quite a few years ago because again she still incorporated her children in there and just you can see there's only two little grandchildren so it's it's quite old. Okay, and there's yeah. many more now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you, ladies, for showing us those. But I am fascinated. Have always been fascinated with this moose hair tufting thing, and I think. Well, first of all, where do you get moose hide? Uh, moose actually, hair, I mean. Moose hair? Actually, we get when our men go hunting and we have the moose hair after. You have uh, to have the, the. Collect all the hair. Animal has to die. You can't get That's it on right. the run. You oh, can't no, get no. on the run. <laughs> no. Okay, okay. No. In fact, I have, uh, when I'm teaching, I give out a handout and you could see my mother. I, draw, I drew my mother picking moose hair off, off a live moose, but that's not really how we do it. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, yeah. but other hairs would work, would it? Other hairs. Like you, um, I've have done experiments with this. This, this, this is, is moose hair, and this is actually washed already and, and just completely washed. Which 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 part it, came from the? Uh -huh. I mean, where did it come on the animal? This is the. Uh, this is where the skin is, and this is the outer part. Okay. So when you get it, it's actually pretty dirty it's got blood yeah, grime yeah, and, and yeah. actually and yeah are they different this like one, on the animal different places yeah you, you get it at the bow um at the bow and the rump and um on the side as okay. long as it's not right on the back uh -huh. and you try and collect the hair that has a lot more white Okay, because, because you could dye it. You could dye it. I use a writ dye to dye the hair. Lovely. And if you, if you can get... Well, this is... This is, is we'll talk about okay. it. This, yeah. is, this is actually all moose hair. You can tell that uh, we've done the stem work. We've done the tufts for the leaves and the flower. Mm -hmm. We've dyed all of that. Okay, um, so you said you actually started, traditionally you started just with the stem work by just kind right. of twisting and stitching it and down. And stitching it down. And then you got creative. Creative and started doing tufts. And the the if you see somebody doing tufts, and the smaller and the more dainty it is, the more prized it is. Of course, yes. Okay. Yeah, I suppose the longer yeah. it takes, too. The longer it <laughs> takes. This one here, I've incorporated moose hair stem work with fish scale art, white fish scales. Oh, my, oh, my land, there is nothing okay. that goes to I mean, you are yeah. the masters of nothing going to waste. <laughs> this is amazing. And this is caribou. Caribou is a little bit softer. We get that from Churchill, the whole, a whole hide, and we cut it in strips, and we actually dye it in long One strips. One hide would make a lot of moose hair. Oh, it caribou would. Hair. And then we've done, well, we can take the lapels, the tie, pet, and these are going to be earrings. Yeah. Yep. First we do the beadwork on the moose hide, then we do the tufts on oh, okay. the beadwork, okay. and then we put a back in. in All right, twice. you're going to have to show me how you do this. Okay, what do I. These are a little pair of uh, baby moxins, the old style moxins. What I usually do when I start tufting is I make uh, the tufts actually freehand, like a double E style. And so, this is a I mean, this was method. one long. Piece. That's right. That was just a one long piece, and I tied it in the center mm -hmm. twice, and it's a double E fashion. You just yep, double E. Yep. The, the second E goes underneath, and you tie it together, and mm -hmm. you make this tuft. Mm -hmm. um, and then you pull it tight. You take the hair. You, you said there's two different ways of doing this, but this is the this, this is, is the easiest, easiest way. way. Okay, good. Um, normally, when I'm doing it with dyed hair, I tend to reuse all of this hair. I keep it all because I don't want to waste anything, considering that it takes more time to prepare your raw material than it is to actually do yeah, yeah, the work. Yeah. No. So we would just... Okay. So and now you've it, got a tuft. These are pro approximately, yeah, tuft, and these are approximately a centimeter. Um, and then what I do is I put a bunch of little tufts together. And this little baby moccasin, so I just sew it in into the tufts are actually really close because together. Because it's already on your needle, because that's what you tied it with. That's right. So you just have to stitch it right you beside just it. Stitch right beside, and you do give or take six, five, five, six tufts, and then after you've done all your tufts together, then you shape it into the rounds or the teardrops, or, uh, or and then yeah. put different colors. Sure, okay. and you could incorporate. You incorporate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ordinarily, I would do the stem work, the, this stem work first before I would add all the tufts. As mm -hmm. this one, I was just going to put a bunch of little tufts to make a, a plain colored moose hair flower. Thank you, Margaret. This is fascinating. Mm -hmm. Again, I just love this. I'm going to have to go and find some moose hair. Moose hair. Cow hair, cow hair. <laughs> cow. Mm. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. <laughs> thank you so much. It's been great. Okay, thank you. Well, what do you think of that, Kathy? Oh, it's delightful to see traditional arts. Have you ever seen this before? I yet? haven't. It's fascinating. It just makes me want to try something new. Well, I think it also gives us appreciation for what actually goes into this, because this is a piece that I had done for me many years ago, and I just cherish this piece, um, and that is all moose hair. This is leaving it long, which That's is kind lovely. of interesting, and of course it makes our little MW, which is kind of fun. So this has been great. I Thank you for being Absolutely. with us. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time on Linda McPhee's Workshop. To receive the companion book for this series, send 1998 to the address on your screen or call 1-888-McPhee.